Hi all and welcome back to the shed. Um, today we're going to go over how to connect a, or put together a complete Renogy system from the 60 amp controller to the inverter and heck we may even throw in a shunt there just for fun um, but we'll get to that when we cross that path. What we're working with today though is we got a couple of uh, eco worthy batteries here and just some small ones some 12.8 volt 30 amp hour batteries we're going to connect in parallel and then I've got the Rover 60 amp controller and then I've got the Renogy 2000 watt inverter um, the last edition not the newest edition and we're gonna go ahead and go through all of that and it'll be quick and dirty now one thing I want to remind you guys of is that I'm gonna be using just whatever cables I have because I don't want to make new cables today for this project so when you're putting your system together keep in mind that you need the same gauge wires or appropriate gauge wires throughout the system appropriate fuses and you also need the same length of wires It's very important for balance of the system and charging your batteries and discharging your batteries okay well let's go ahead and take a look at it you guys okay so let's just go ahead and start out with getting the controller mounted up here and I've got like a little screw I just kind of keep intact over here Dave and then I'll grab Oh, this is my buddy Dave, by the way, helping me out. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Take that. We'll just put this one in like right about. Let's go there. Go ahead and get that in place there and then we'll go ahead and mount the inverter up over here now remember I've got some of these screws already in place you're gonna have to figure out the configuration for your RV or van or shed or whatever on your own and this is gonna hook up just about right there actually I want to flip this over one thing about the Rover um, or the Renogy uh, inverter is that you know all the plugins are on one side and then your power in is on the other side and sometimes when you mount it the prints upside down and if you're anything like me it bothers the heck out of me but I just kind of live with it okay so now I've got you know I've got the controller mounted and I have the inverter mounted we're going to go ahead and put in a couple of bus bars really quick and for those of you that don't have bus bars or you're trying to hook everything to your battery don't just get a bus bar and hook it up to the bus bar you'll be you'll thank me for it later i promise um, it makes things a lot easier and a lot cleaner i'll include a link for these in my description section right below the screen there um, to amazon they're inexpensive they're made of copper they're just a good unit they really are And for you folks that are still watching, I will have a full diagram on how I wired this up with appropriate gauge wires and fuses. Put that one right there. Okay, so those are good right there for now. We're going to go on and uh, move on to the next step, which is hooking up the controller to the bus bars, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and hook up the inverter to the bus bar. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and connect up our batteries and get that up and running. And then we'll connect the PV panels in that order. So let's take a closer look here at the terminals or the lugs in the controller. So you can see right here, we've got our... Um, PV positive in and our PV negative in. We're so, going to use those two for the solar panels. And then we've got a battery negative right here and a battery positive right here. So the positive of the battery will connect to the positive bus bar and the negative of the battery will connect to the negative bus bar. 
these will be left standing with the PV panel alone. Okay, and then we'll connect to the bus bar the inverter. Okay, so now we have the battery cables attached to our Rover 60 amp controllers. We're going to go ahead and connect um, from the uh, bus bars themselves. We're going to go ahead and get the inverter connected. Again, I've got my red and black wires, and these are a little bit heavier in gauge. I believe these are a two gauge as opposed to the four gauge over here. Either way, we're covered on our wire gauge size. And I'll explain more about that later in the diagram that I have for you guys. Okay, we'll just go ahead and tighten those down real quick. Make sure we're all good and snug. Now, just to reiterate what uh, Dave and I were talking about, is that if I was going to incorporate a shunt, I would put it right here. And I may do that in this video. We'll see. And I may cut this whole segment out. But right now, no shunt. Also, fuses are necessary. This is a basic system with very few fuses. Actually, no fuses right now. I may put them in later. I don't know. But I would actually put in a fuse over here, um, going to the inverter. I'd also have one coming from the, bat uh, the charge controller here. And then another one coming from the batteries, which is what we're going to go ahead and hook up next. Okay, so we've got the batteries in place. We've got them hooked up in a parallel configuration with our two positives here and our two negatives here. You can see they're connected. And then we've got our negative wire coming over here from the negative lug of the lead battery over to our negative bus bar. Now in a perfect world, I know we're just doing this quick and dirty like, this positive would have been on the opposite lead so we're crossing paths and grabbing both batteries. But for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna go ahead and stick with what we got here, okay? And with just two batteries, it's not that big of a deal, you guys. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead. Once I hook this up, this is going to power up the controller. We want to make sure we power the controller before we connect the panels, okay? Little sparky spark flies out. Don't let it scare you. <laughs> All right, she powered right up there. And... Yes, it reads 100% right now. So now we're going to go ahead and hook up our um, panels and just kind of see how that works. We'll put a load up on the inner, uh, inverter here. We'll put a load up on the inverter and we'll see how it works. Remember, we're fuseless right now, but you should have fuses and that's all going to be explained in the diagram. Okay, so you can see we've got everything hooked up over here. We've got the Renogy on and powered by the batteries, or the Renogy controller up and on, powered by the batteries. We've got the inverter in place. And then over here, we've got three Renogy 100 watt panels hooked in series. Um, because, well, it'll work, that's why. Um, it'll give us a little bit more voltage. And I've got it hooked up to this breaker box here, a little cutoff switch. Now, the colors are mixed up. Our red is actually ground. I tested those with my multimeter to make sure I wasn't going to hook up anything backwards. Even though the Renogy does have um, a protection circuit in place for stuff like that, I recommend not to do it. Always check with your multimeter, make sure you got the right leads, okay? Okay, so, we're gonna go ahead and connect our uh, red wire, which in this case is our ground, okay? We already went over that. And we're gonna connect it up over here to our PV ground, which is on this side here. And what I like to do, again, just like I did with the battery wires, I like to take these lug uh, bolts all the way out, or studs, whatever you wanna call them, that way I make sure that I don't get any insulation trapped in between the lug bolt itself and the wire strands because that can cause resistance. Resistance causes heat. Heat causes fires. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we're going to go negative to negative here.
do a little tug test on each one. Everything's looking really good and tight. We want to make sure that's the case. Good. Now, from this point here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the inverter on and throw a load on it. Okay, so I've got my batteries in place in parallel configuration for 12 volts. I've got the inverter over here. I've got a small 40 watt light bulb pulling a load. You can see it's working pretty well. Now, the last thing we got to do here is basically turn the panels on. I've got a nice little breaker here I was showing you earlier. We're going to click that on. <coughs> Let's go ahead and take a closer look at that. So you can see the panels are booting up right now. We're cranking up in wattage now. Th these batteries are about topped off, but right now we've got you know three Renogy panels hooked in series. We got a potential of 300 watts, but they are laying flat, not getting optimal sun angle. So we're pulling about 250 watts right now on average. So not a bad deal. So at any rate guys, that's pretty much how you hook up a real basic system. And I want to remind you to not forget about fuses, okay? Fuses are super important. And I think what we'll do is in the diagram, we're going to include, um, we're going to include fuses in the diagram with proper wire sizes and stuff like that. So that way you guys can look it all over. And if you want to see one of my videos on how to install a shunt, I've got multiple videos on installing shunts. I'll include those links also. And you can incorporate that right into a system like this. But I do recommend making sure you get good fuses, T-rated fuses if you can, and get them in during your install so that that way you're all set up and ready to go and you're ready to go safe. Let's go. Okay, so... This is the diagram here. Now I've implemented a few more things as far as like I've got call outs for the size of the fuse. Now I put in ANL fuses because they're easy to plop into a drawing. Um, I, I personally think there's better fuses than ANL fuses. They are a slow burning fuse. Um, on some of these, it's better to have a fast burning one. Um, but uh, for simplicity sakes, I say. Go with the ANL um, if that's what you got handy. Oftentimes, that's what Renogy sends you. Um, I say a slow burning fuse is better than no fuse at all. Um, now, I also put in an inline fuse up here. Um, this is a 15 amp fuse from the uh, panels. Probably get away with a 10 amp um, fuse when you're just running like three or four uh, 100 watt panels in series. And because you're going to stay well under 10 amps, but you know, 15 amps is fine. Your wires are rated for approximately 30 amps. These are 10 AWG PV wires. And you can see we've got the panels hooked in series from, you know, positive, negative, negative, positive, however you want to look at it. I'm running back to the controller here. Um, you can see that I've got two 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries hooked in parallel with positives connected together, the negatives connected together. Everything to and from the battery is basically number two American wire gauge um, thickness wires. And um, anything on the hotter side of the load, you know, going towards the inverter, we're running at 100 amp um, fuses. Now, some people will say you can run a 200 amp fuse and this and that. If you're getting into something like 200 amp fuses, you know, you really got to think about your wire size at that point and what you're actually running and what the purpose is. This is a small system and I think it's good for a small application such as, a, you know, a, a van or, you know, even a, a camper trailer, a smaller one or something like that. Um, and I have actually ran, you know, a smaller air conditioner off of this system. And it does pretty well, but, you know, it's got a heavy draw, a heavy draw on the amps. Um, but still, it doesn't get up into the 100 amp range. So that's just something to be mindful of, that if you think you're going to be using more than 100 amps at a time, um, you may want to look at a different system that's just got more beef to it. Um, can, you know, I'm not going to name any, you know, companies out there, but there's companies out there that uh, make very, very, very good controllers and components. Um, and you can run these heavier gauge wires and, you know, get some better amps out of it and be more reliable and safe. 
Um, you can notice in the diagram, you know, I implemented the Renogy BT300. Um, of course, off of that, we would have something like the uh, one core um, for remote monitoring and stuff. I've got a battery cutoff switch here coming from the battery hot um, to the positive bus bar. Um, and I've got, you know, I went ahead and put a chart up here for our um, battery. And I went ahead, and because this is a Renogy system, I went ahead and designed it as a, um, you can see that's the chart I'm talking about there. Um, we just said, hey, let's just, you know, put a little graph up there, a chart, call out chart for the Renogy 100 amp Life FAPO batteries. Um, and again, I know when these are hooked in parallel, they can pump out a bunch more amps and that control our inverter can also, you know, take a bunch more amps. But listen, we're dealing with different wire sizes and that controller in particular, um, you know, you just it won't really keep up with it. This is designed to be a smaller system and a pretty decent running one. Also, if you use it for smaller purposes. OK. OK, there, folks. Um, there you have it, and that's you know really just a super basic system. Um, follow the diagram for the fuses and um, just an overall reference, and that way you can get your cutoff switches, your fuses, and everything else into play. Um, I'll include some links below to some other videos on you know how to implement the shunt and all that stuff that I didn't demonstrate in the video and. We'll have other videos out there too, and I'll include some links to where you can find these parts and whatnot, and these pieces that I use, such as the bus bar and you know the cutoff switch and whatnot. Um, all of this is heavily recommended, and there's no sense in cutting corners when you're putting together a system because accidents can and will happen. Um, so you got to be careful because fires and stuff like that can be catastrophic, why lie? Um, so it's important to follow the rules. Um, again, I am not an electrician. Um, I never claim to be. I'm just a guy that has loved electricity for almost my entire life. And I feel as though even though I have a pretty good handle on it, I can't take responsibility for what you guys are doing out there. Um, I'm just giving my best recommended advice, and that's all I can do. So, so at any rate, I um, just wanted to let you guys know that um, that's a pretty good little small system. Great for little vans and stuff like that. Do it right so you don't start a fire because that ain't so awesome, but this system is pretty freaking awesome.